Okay, we are going to do some practice questions on average atomic mass in this video. And these questions on tests are always kind of silly because you're obviously gonna have a periodic table for your test. And the answers to these questions are always on the periodic table. So typically you would have a data table like this where you have isotopes of an element, you have their mass and their percent abundance, which is really like how prevalent they are or how popular they are in nature. And then you'll get a question like, what is the average mass? Well, the average mass should be that. Whatever's on the periodic table is the average mass. So these questions are usually not asking you what is the average mass, but to show a setup for calculating the average mass, because that's the only thing they could actually get away with asking, because otherwise you just look up the answer on the periodic table and it kind of defeats the purpose of the question. So in order to do these questions, you have to take the mass of the isotope and multiply it by the abundance, but percent is kind of a unit. So you have to take this and convert it out of that and put the decimal out in front. So really you're moving the decimal two places to the left. And if we do that here, we're going to have to add a zero right there. So we'd have 0 0.003 and then 1, 2, put a 0 right there, 0 0.088. Okay, and I like the leading 0 here. Okay, so now my percent abundances are no longer percents, they're decimals, which means I'm allowed to put them in equations now. And I'm just going to multiply that by the mass of each of these isotopes because that's how it's done. So you will kind of... Um, you're going to take the data of one and add it to the data of the next. So for neon 20, the mass is 19.99, and you would multiply that by this right here, 0 0.909. Close the parentheses, and now you add that to the data for neon 21. 20.99 times this very, very, very small amount. And then we're going to do the same 21.99 times 0 0.088. I don't know if that worked. Nope. And then you close the parentheses. That is the correct numerical setup. That's how it's done. You take the data. Let's just color code this. We have neon 20. This here represents neon 20. Uh, then we have neon 21, which would be represented by this chunk right here. And then neon 22 would be represented by this chunk right here. And when you add all of that together, you should come up with 20.18. And if you're not getting exactly 20.18, I would assume that... If you're close, it's an issue of significant figures or the data was rounded a little inappropriately. You can see here, this only goes to two places behind the decimal. Um, that could just be an error in collecting data. The percent abundance only has one digit behind the decimal. If you're getting something way off, then your setup is incorrect. But if you're off by just like a 10th, I wouldn't worry about it. I would just assume that it is a fault in the data. So that's really what's happening here. Um, so these are the types of questions that are a little silly because the answer is right on the periodic table, but it's really usually the setup that they're looking for. The next type of question you'd get is something like this, where either you have uh, an element box right there for you, or it says, you know, referencing the periodic table, what is the most abundant isotope of neon? And they don't actually give you the little box to look at. At the question, you'd have to go refer to the periodic table. Either way, the most abundant isotope is going to be the isotope whose mass is closest to that average. So 20.1797, the closest whole number is 20. So 20 is going to be the most abundant isotope. And if we look back at that data, that's exactly what we see here. Neon 20 represents 90.9% of all of the neons in this sample that the chemists used. So this is a really good method. It, it works every time. 
Um, it's kind of the same thing with your grades. It let's just say you are taking chemistry, obviously, and you have some test scores, right? And your tests will say you got a 90, you got an 80, you got an 85, you got an 82, and then you had the flu and you missed six days of school and you got a 55 on a test. Obviously, that 55 is going to pull your grade down, right? But because you have so many good grades between the 80 and the 90, we can assume that your grade is going to be somewhere in like the B minus range, right? Maybe a C plus. Um, it, assuming this is an F, this is not going to all of a sudden make your grade an F. The same thing's happening here. We have a lot of neons. If we had 100 neons, 91 of them would be this neon 20, which means that, like, give yourself 100 tests, right, in your grade book. If you got an A on 91 of them, then your grade is probably going to be an A in the class, right? So the same thing is happening here. This average is super, 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 super close to 20, so we can assume that 20 is going to be the most abundant isotope. A lot of the time they'll do something like this where they won't give you an element. A lot of the time it'll be like element X because X is not on the periodic table. It's just a mystery element. You're not really sure what it is. And they'll say isotope A and isotope B. And they're trying to get you to compare things hypothetically without actually referencing the periodic table. And sometimes they pull real data from the periodic table and it would be easy for you to figure out what element they're talking about and then go look at the period. But that's not always the case. So I don't want you in the habit of looking for it to match an element because sometimes your teacher gets crafty and makes stuff up to see if you really are understanding. So let's pretend we don't know that this is neon, right? It's a mystery element and there's no way to figure it out because it doesn't align with anything from the periodic table. Um, they will give you data and say, Isotope A has a mass of 19.99 and its abundance in nature is 90.9%. And isotope B has this data and isotope C has that data. What would be the average mass of this element? Or, and they may actually have you do a calculation like we did in the first example. Or it'll be a multiple choice and they'll ask you, the average mass of this element would be closest to and you would have to say 99.9 .9 or, you know, the 20 because it is the most abundant isotope of them all. These questions, um, they will ask them in a variety of ways, but truthfully, it's going to come down to just being able to read this data. So if there are any questions, please, of course, leave them in the comment section below this video. Subscribe so you don't miss our next practice session, and I'll see you there. Bye.